As you just heard in the piece, Beijing says that its military budget this year is $91.5 billion. But the Pentagon estimates that the Chinese actually spend much more than that, about $160 billion just last year. Now, it sounds like a lot of money, but to put it into perspective, the U.S. military will spend about $550 billion this year. So should we be concerned about China's military buildup? To help us answer that question and more, we have with us today Philip Saunders, Director of the Center for the Study of Chinese Military Affairs at the National Defense University. Thanks for joining us today, Philip. Happy to be here. Now, there's been a lot of talk about China's naval expansion, but again, you know, the United States has about 11 carriers worldwide, while China only has one. Uh, should we really be concerned about China's expansion? Well, this, uh, the new carrier is sort of dipping a toe in the water of what it means to have a real power projection navy. And so I would say this ship on its own doesn't mean a lot. Uh, it's mostly going to be used for training. And until you have aircraft that can fly off the carrier, it's mostly a big target. But it, in five or six years, that will turn into a real capability that they could deploy elsewhere in Asia or outside the region. Uh, it's not so much that it is a concern for the U.S. Navy, but for a number of Chinese, China's neighbors, it's a formidable ship, uh, at least once it's fully equipped and, and has aircraft and is ready to operate. Got it. Now, the U.S. Defense Department says that the buildup is primarily aimed at preventing any declaration of Taiwanese independence. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think that's been the main focus of China's military modernization since about 1996, when there was the last major incident across the Taiwan Strait. Um, but I also think it's the case that as Chinese military capabilities have improved, they now have the ability to damage Taiwan enough to deter independence. And I think we're starting to see a set of other interests and other missions drive some of China's military modernization. So while Taiwan is still the most important mission, we're also starting to see other things like protection of sea lanes of communication and protection of Chinese citizens abroad and Chinese economic interests be talked about as a justification for new military capabilities. Got it. Now, over the past uh, 200 years or so, to the extent that China has been invaded by foreign countries, it's always been attacked from the sea. So couldn't you argue that rather than representing an act of aggression, they're just acting prudently to have a force that can defend its coast and keep its ceilings open to uh, supply its economy? It is true that uh, while China is historically thought about as a continental power or land power, uh, maritime domain is increasingly important for its economic future, uh, and that is a security concern. But I think one of the other drivers for China's naval modernization is that they have a number of unresolved maritime claims, islands in the South China Sea, islands in the East China Sea, uh, and a large exclusive economic zone. And it's those unresolved maritime claims that are often cited by Chinese analysts and Navy officers as a reason they need to improve their naval capabilities. So I think it's not all about defense. Uh, there are also things that China claims that it does not control, and they see naval power as a means of uh, strengthening those claims and perhaps uh, ultimately enforcing them with, uh, with the use of force. Right. Thanks so much, Philip. We really appreciate your insights. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.